the best-selling digital artist of all time, the most streamed female artist of all time, the best-selling singles artist of all time, the highest certified artist in the world, the first black artist to get 31 top 10s, and the only artist from this century to score 14 Billboard Hot 100 number ones. And who are we talking about? The one and only Robin Rihanna Fenty. We will be discussing her career and celebrating her 15 years as we look forward to the next 15. Yo, what's up, guys? It's me. I'm back. Eugene Smiles. We are here. And we are here to talk about the one and only Queen Robin Rihanna Fenty. Can I get an amen? Woo! Woo, yay! <laughs> uh, I'm here with a special guest again to help me discuss. Who are you, guest? Dakota. Dakota Fanning is back, y'all. <laughs> She rung my doorbell. <laughs> All right. So you heard the intro. You heard the receipts. These are facts. These are not opinions. Um, We know who's in charge. You know who's in charge of the girls? Rihanna's in charge of the girls. <laughs> but, you know, if you don't know, today, which is, uh, shit, what's today's date? May 24th. May 24th is 15 day 15 years ago. I'm fucking up. <laughs> 15 up? No. I it doesn't make any sense. 15 years ago, Rihanna dropped her debut single Pine the Replay. Yes. It ended up going all the way to number 2 on the charts. It would have been number 1, but you know who was who was stopping her from going number 1 with her first single? Mariah Carey, We Belong Together. That was a big song. That was a huge song. So- that was a huge song. So, you know, it, it's fine. We didn't get that number one, but we got 14 other number right. ones. <laughs> so let's just start back. Um, I stand Rihanna like I used to stand, or like I continue to stand Aaliyah. It was something about both of those artists that when I first seen them in their first video, I was instantly attracted to them. Didn't know what it was, but it, I liked their style, like the look. I liked something about them. I agree. I went to go buy Rihanna's first album, Music of the Sun, first day it came out. When albums used to come out on Tuesday, I bought it. I went to Best Buy and bought the album. And it used to be right on the edge of the aisle. New releases. New releases. Yeah. Where you can see them as soon as you walk into the store. Right. I knew something was special about this girl, and I knew that I was going to stay in her forever. So what were your thoughts on Music of the Sun and her opening era into the music industry 15 years ago? I thought it was a breath of fresh air, honestly. It was music that, you know, outside of you specifically putting on a reggae song, nobody else was making music like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was a breath of fresh air. And then I immediately was like, who is this girl? Right, because it was totally different from when we had Sean Paul out. It was more pop ish. It was yes. a girl. We didn't. We never really had a, a kind of a mainstream female do reggae like that ish. And, and young and young, you know. Um, so it was just something about her. Her second single was "If Loving Is What You Want." Loving what you want, you should make me Love young it. girl. Uh. It did did pretty well, but you know they kind of rushed through the first era. They she had her major hit, she had her her moderate hit, and then they kind of went into the next album by the next year, which was a girl like me. Do you remember a girl like me? Just name some stuff. <laughs> I'm older, so it just so a girl like me it. was when she got her first number one hit, SOS. Oh, yeah. She crossed over from this little R&B Caribbean girl to now a pop star. Yes. SOS sampled a huge, popular, hugely popular song and came out and was like killing it. First number one record. So I, I ran across an interview uh, where A. Marie was talking about SOS and talking about Rihanna. And she said that, you know, Rihanna 
was able to cross over when nobody else was crossing over. Like no other f- black females were crossing over like that with that type of music. Right. You know, so it was like she was already kind of breaking the glass ceiling very early on in her career. And we didn't even notice it until now. So a girl like me comes out. It does pretty well. And I want y'all to keep this in mind. Girl Like Me and Music of the Sun did not debut number one. Keep that in mind. Think about the stats that I gave you at the beginning and then think about the fact that these were not even number one albums. Keep that in mind. Um, So Girl Like Me, she had Unfaithful was the second single. Written by Neo, right? Written by Neo. You know, Unfaithful was huge. And it was a ballad. You know, um, and she just kind of, I don't know, showed a lot of, a lot of maturity. And I think this girl was still 17, 18 at the time. Like, I don't just make fast music. I can give you a ballad. She can give us everything. And she did that with that album. So one of the things, if you grew up in this era of watching Rihanna, is when you watch her performances... She danced kind of like somebody and kind of dressed kind of like somebody else. Do you know who I'm talking about? Uh -uh. Mm Mm-mm. Back then, during those first two albums, they were trying to make Rihanna into a little Beyonce. Just the way she, the choreography was, the way she was kind of dressing, it was like, okay, here comes little Beyonce for whatever reason. And I bring that up because that's why we ended up getting a totally different look, totally different style and sound with Good Girl Gone Bad. She chopped her hair. Chopped her hair off. A nasty asymmetrical bob. Every girl wanted their hair cut like that. (laughs) Nasty. Nigga Rihanna bob. Right. And it was very shocking to a lot of people because usually people don't drastically change in between eras. And this was maybe still like a year after her second album. And then we got that signature sound that people would be chasing for years with umbrella, eh, 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 eh. (laughs) Umbrella came out and did amazing, you know, first couple weeks, but then it went all the way to number one. Umbrella was humongous. Umbrella put definitely a ripple through the industry um, and really showed who Rihanna was. Like the first two albums were previews of who she was and and what she could do. Good Girl Gone Bad was that girl that was like, bitch, I'm here. I'm here to stay. I'm going to slay all y'all bitches. All of them. So let's like run through these singles that she had because... Let's do it. Good Girl Gone Bad had a bunch of singles. As most of her albums do. Maybe not singles, but hits. Well, hits. Yeah. Say that. I got hits, like Kaya. They stick like grits. So, Good Girl Gone Bad, of course, we had Umbrella. Went to number one, uh, multi-platinum all over the world. Huge song. Shut Up and Drive, which, y'all, Shut Up and Drive is just not one of my favorite songs. I like that song. I do like the song, but... <laughs> If she never performs it or I never hear it again, I'm okay. I'm absolutely okay. Um, sh- <laughs> Shut up and drive. Uh, did it stay? It wasn't that huge. Hate that I love you. Her duet with Neo. Great R&B song. Uh, top 10. Grammy nominated. Uh, don't stop the music. Love it. It hit number one all over the world. Not in the US. Almost. But it. You hear, do you hear all the different genres we're getting right here? Just pop, rock, R and B, dance, EDM, yes, like yeah. Then we had the re-release of Good Girl Gone Bad where we got Take a Bow and Disturbia. Two more number one hits. Three number ones out of one era. Who does that? Who does that? Nobody. Right. Um, and not to forget about rehab. Oh my gosh. Written by Justin Timberlake. I love that song. Rehab is definitely one of my favorite songs. I love to see her sing it live. She yeah. sung it 
on one of her live DVDs, and it's amazing. So, Good Girl Gone Bad was huge. She got uh, her first Grammy with uh, Umbrella, with Jay-Z. She was super excited about. And then, you know, we had the whole incident with Chris Brown. Ugh. That happened after the Grammys. Um, that's all we're going to talk about with that. <laughs> that was just to signify that that was a dark chapter in her life. Yes. For all uh, of us. It was a definitely a dark chapter. Yes, for all of us. Now that that's thrown in the trash, she was in a dark, dark mood. So then we got Rated R, which is one of her best albums of all time. Which is, if, if somebody else was singing Rated R, if Adele or Amy Winehouse was singing Rated, Rated R, y'all would have ate it up. The award shows would have ate it up and everything. But because it was Rihanna and people didn't take Rihanna that serious, serious as an artist, it didn't get the attention that it deserved. But why? She was delivering. She was delivering us pop hits. And up tempo and just like top 40 kind of hits. Rated R wasn't a top 40 kind of album. Russian Roulette, the first single. Russian Roulette is is a so game. Are you like, saying you need a, a white girl to push edgier music? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's what the industry oh. is saying. The industry is saying that. Let we could take it back to Aliyah's third album. You know, it didn't get the attention that I felt it deserved. Of course, she died, so that kind of messed up a lot of things. But that album has a lot of rock and Latin and pop, and it's very different. And nobody else was doing it. Rated R was kind of similar to that. Um, while all the other girls was bouncing around the clubs and all this, Rihanna was, take a breath, take it deep. Like, literally playing Russian roulette. Right. In a video where she's getting you know, grazed by bullets in a pool. Like, it's a very dark video. She gets hit by a car. You know, super dark, dark video. Still a top 10 hit. Uh, but super dark video. And then we go into hard. I'm so hard. Like, again, she shows how she can go from a very dark pop song to trap in the club. Like, we in the hood with Jeezy. Right. And then she's giving fashion this whole era. This is one of the, if you look up Rihanna during the Rated R era, she gives fashion yeah. look after look after down. Look. And not only think she'd be going to wear important all the time, she just was giving the shoulders, she was giving the chopped hair, it was, she was giving fashion down during Rated R. Um, and then of course, you know, we had to get a little bit of sunshine on the album, so we had Rude Boy. All time Rihanna favorite song went to number one again as another number one. That's your all time favorite. Oh no, song? no, I'm just saying it's one. Of, oh, it's not oh, one of my all time oh, favorite. I do love it, but okay. no. Um, but it's one. Of, you know, when you say Rihanna, yeah. Rude Boy comes up. So uh, and she's performing. You know, on her tour, she's performing it less and less. <laughs> So I don't know if we're gonna get Rude Boy on the next tour. That you might think be she it. Like it I think she, you know, Rihanna likes to just move on. She'd be like, "All right, I'm yeah, kind of ready to go to something else." Um, we got one of my favorites, Rockstar 101. Yes. Again, we're going from Caribbean with Rude Boy to rock. She actually had Slash playing the guitar, and that's a big deal for those of you who don't know who that man is. That's a huge deal. To have him playing on the record and be in the fucking video. Like, that just doesn't happen. You know, um, Tiamo wasn't a single in the U.S. So back in the day, even though that wasn't that long ago, back in the day, sometimes some countries would have singles that, you know, other countries wouldn't. So people would release a single, but it might be a single that's only released in America, it's sent to the radio. It has CD singles, but then other countries might not get a single or get a totally different okay, single. Yeah. Tayamo was a single for South America. I want to say I think it went like number one in like Brazil or something. And when she did Rock and Rio, she performed it um, because that's their song. Right, right. <laughs> um, and 
Teyamo uh, in the video, which is available on YouTube. She, Rihanna's getting in some lesbian action. Yang. What? What? She's getting into some lesbian action. So we're going totally opposite after Rated R. Like, totally opposite. From very dark, dark hair, dark style, fashion, to all bright, bright red. Ronald McDonald fucking red. Rihanna had changed her hair. During this time, she was doing the last Girl on Earth tour, uh, finishing the Rated R era. She had already had her hair red in like this very shortcut. Um, so that was the transition to the loud era. Rihanna. Only girl in the world. Like, so I remember before Loud came out, somebody did an interview and they were like, oh, Loud is going to be like this generation's Michael, like Michael Jackson thriller. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, what? You know, immediately people started tripping. The internet was still kind of new. Uh, like, and I don't even, I think social media was still kind of new too. Um, but people was tripping. It was like, oh, they setting this girl up. This is not going to happen. Like, nothing's going to be compared to Thriller. And then when I look back at that era, and we had Only Girl in the World. Uh, What's My Name? Both number ones. Um, not not that song. <laughs> S&M, not that one. You <laughs> S&M, uh, California King Bed, Man Down and Cheers. When you think about all those songs, all those songs were hits. Yes. All of them were hits. Again, Only Girl in the World, What's My Name, and s and went, went number one. The first three singles went number one off of this, this album. Again, who does that? People don't get three number ones in era no more. Like, Rihanna did it a couple times, and Cardi did it. Who else doing that? <laughs> who else is doing that um so she was really coming with it and the style the everything was bright the colors like rihanna was really seeming to be in a better a totally different and better place yes. um with the loud era and the loud era is definitely the navy's one of the navy's best eras they love we love red Anna. we don't know if she's gonna ever come back but we love her and we miss her and if you haven't seen the Man Down video, please go check out the Man Down video. Amazing. Legendary. Art. It should have won a Grammy. Art. Amazing. So, um, and, you know, again, the genres, because that's that's the thing per album. Cheers was kind of like a bar rock song. Man Down, Caribbean, reggae, California King Bed, country song. Uh, S&M was one of those pop, I don't know, either alternative pop songs. Um, and What's My Name was a dance record, like a European dance record, like all hits. Nobody's doing that. So then we get to another number one record. We found love in a hopeless place. He's like <laughs> another amazing video. Another great video. They end, She did end up winning a Grammy for that video. It was number one for 10 weeks. It was one of the longest number ones of the 2000s. Again, another list that she's on. And um, it was number one in almost every country except for two. Wow. So she was really, really on it. Uh, you the One was the second single, which fucking um, Where Have You Been should have been the second single. If Where Have You Been was the second single, it would have went to number one. Definitely, but I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. They wanted to release You to One. I like You to One. Yes. Uh, again, it's kind of a reggae Caribbean ish song. Talk that talk. We back to the hip hop and R and B with Jay Z. Grammy nominated song, Princess of China, which was a Coldplay single. Amazing video. Um, I mean, re there's nothing that Rihanna can't wear. She's one of those artists that can wear anything, any color, any style, and she can make it pop. Yes. Um, so then we got this song that was like a minute and some change to kind of hit the radio. Minute and 18. Minute 18. It's called Birthday Cake. You might have heard it. <laughs> you might have. Might um, it did have a remix with Chris Brown. The remix was never released for like iTunes or a CD single. And it was never released. Officially, it was just on the radio. So it never really counted. 
Um, it did count for chart position, but it never counted for sales. Now, why do I bring that up? Because a minute and 18 song, a minute and 18 second song is an interlude. And that was an interlude in between basically the album transitioning then to slow music. And it went gold. And this year it went platinum. So you're telling me an interlude has sold over a million records. Who else doing that? That's the kind of music she made. That's the kind of music. Again, thing. we went from pop, adult contemporary pop with uh, Coldplay, Princess of China, to real ratchet hip hop with Birthday Cake. Um, Where Have You Been was the kind of last, last kind of official single, um, which it peaked at number three, performed it on American Idol and Saturday Night Live. Amazing performances. And this was the video where it was like, oh, I thought y'all said Rihanna can't dance. She's definitely doing that choreography. She killed it. Um, and then the last kind of, I guess, I don't know, promo single, if that's a thing, uh, Cockiness came out, which she did a remix with ASAP Rocky and performed it at the VMAs. That the that year at the VMAs, she won Video of the Year, making her the first artist to win Video of the Year twice. Bang. Twice. Uh, then we went to Unapologetic. Mm. Diamonds. Mm. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> Number one record. Again, we're going back from super ratchet with cockiness to diamonds, which is a pop song written by Sia. And I would see, I worked for uh, Sprint at the time, and guys would come in, like thug-looking, hard-looking guys be coming in, and Rihanna come on, and they singing this song and bouncing their head. What you think? Uh, some Navy members ain't. I don't know. Something. Back then, I just did it. I didn't know what they were into. <laughs> I didn't know that she had that kind of appeal. I, I oh, just yeah. was not aware. Um. So we went from diamonds to stay. Again, we're on this very slow ballad, piano-driven ballad. Um. Peaked again at number three. Let me tell y'all, for those who are not the Navy, y'all don't understand how bad it, it gets when it's like a song gets to two or three and it just kind of stays there. Mm. And we try so hard to get it to number one, but it just stays there. You have to be, you have to have a huge song or be a huge artist to block Rihanna from getting number one. Point blank, period. It has to, it has to be humongous. Because if you're just a little mediocre song or something, it's Rihanna's probably going to surpass you because her reach is beyond that of this world. Pour it up, pour it up, pour it up. Stripper anthem. Watch my file out. So y'all, do y'all realize? Like I, w I wish y'all were living like everybody was living and paying attention. Like she literally went, went from diamonds. To stay, to pour it up. The most ratchetest song, one of the most ratchetest songs by a female pop artist, by a pop artist in the 2000s, Pour It Up. You were just saying, I want you to stay. Right, and now she's telling you to... Strip clubs and dollar bills. Like, <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Rihanna... You need to be stopped. You're out of control. Uh, Love Song with Future was pretty much released to radio. It did pretty well in the U.S. Uh, got, and, and I want you to know all these singles that I'm naming, all these singles have won certifications, have earned certifications. I'm not going to go through that because we will definitely be here all day. But all, day. all of them have. Uh, then uh, Right Now came out with David Guerrero. Um Sure, whatever. See, that's my shut up and drive right now. Right now. We just need you right now. What now? Uh, what now was the last one to get a video? Love what it. now is one of my favorite songs. Love it. it really fits her voice. It's what now is the jam. So, and then jump. The jump, which samples genuine if you want it. Let's do it. Pony uh, actually was a single in Australia, and it was really big in Australia. It got to number five 
top five hit on their charts in Australia, and they didn't even get no video. Mm, 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 mm. So from 2014 to 2015 is where we're in the in-between stage. We thought an album was coming. We thought it was coming soon. Um, Cause we were getting hit music, and we were getting hit songs too, not just songs that you know people release, they flop, and they call them promo singles. And we were getting an album every year. We were getting an album every like year at this that. time. Yeah. Forgot to mention that. Pretty from uh, "Good Girl Gone Bad" to "Unapologetic," we were getting an album every year, like every single year. And usually people only do that when their albums are underperforming, but Rihanna was having hit songs, number one hit songs, top 10 songs, every single album, and was still pumping out hits, pumping out hit, pumping out hits. So we don't hear from that. But we did get four or five seconds. So four or five seconds, a little history on this song with Paul McCartney and Rihanna. Um, Actually, Kanye West got the, the beat or the guitar riffs from an old... Um, Paul McCartney video and he was actually the one that was executive producing Rihanna's album at the time yes we were going to get an executive produced album from Rihanna by Kanye West do y'all realize how close we were to that and it would have been interesting because 4 or 5 seconds was a product of that and at one point, Ty Dolla Sign was also in the studio with Kanye and Rihanna. And he had talked about some of the music that was made and everything, but we never we don't we we never got it. I don't know if some of those songs are now on anti, but I'm pretty sure there was a lot of songs we just never got or probably never going to get. That's sad. And Kanye is saved and stuff now too, so what that mean? He don't curse and stuff. He don't anymore. curse. He don't want to perform his old music. None of that. <sighs> and if he do, it's gonna be a Jesus remix. You know what? <laughs> Good for him. Um. <clears throat> so also around this time, we got. <laughs> listen to this. So Rihanna had her. Uh, it wasn't a Pixar movie. Who was that? Whatever Home was oh, the, yes. the animated movie Home. Um. I went to go see it. It was great. And it also had a little soundtrack with it. So she released, like, Home came out, (laughs) Home came out, like, the same day, within the same two or three days of Rihanna releasing Bitch Better Have My Money. Problem? Do y'all realize, do y'all realize how, like, ratchet that is? I'm releasing this rated GPG animated movie for the children, and I'm released. Bitch, better have my money. Where I'm kidnapping the white bitch, holding her ransom because my accountant has fucked my money up and he needs to pay back my money. And I end up killing and stabbing and all this shit my accountant. And then I'm laying. Rihanna's laying butt naked in a treasure chest full of money, smoking a blunt. What's the problem? <laughs> One don't have anything to do with the other. So, <laughs> y'all. Nobody else can do that. Nobody can do that. Another thing I want to mention with Rihanna, especially with like Bitch Better Have My Money, girl, like pop girls were scared to step out the box. They were scared to curse and be super sex. Like they, they like the innocent sexual sexualization, yes. Yes. little innocent stuff. But to be like Blake, just titties out, whatever, like they weren't doing that. Ariana was doing it and also doing it as a black woman. If you don't understand, you know, black people get scrutinized for things that white people do all the time. So, you know, a white woman is sexy or whatever is more accepted than a a black woman being super sexualized and all that. So for her to do that and then bitch, like bitch better have my money. Should have won video of the year at every award show. It should have won best video at the Grammys. It should have won the Pulitzer fucking prize. <laughs> that video is amazing. What else? Amazing. How, like, how do they? How do you? How do you just ignore that? How do you ignore it? I don't know. They even had a uh, with the Samsung phone. They had the little VR thing, and you can be sitting in the chair as the guy in the VR, the virtual reality thing, and she's walking around in her see-through plastic uh, 
get up what white with her knife. Have my money? Yeah. There was like an app or something you can download and use the VR. So it was it was pretty cool. Um, we she also had a a deal with the NCAA tournament, and American Oxygen was was yeah. her. Uh, there was a song for that campaign or whatever she was doing with them. American Oxygen is another song that was probably a Kanye ish executive produced song. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that now. Definitely. American Auction was a song talking about just trying to make it in America, being an immigrant and all this other stuff. And it had beautiful imagery. It had some of... I loved her hair. She had that black and gray hair in the video. And I'm so... It's so crazy that we've never kind of seen that again. American Oxygen did flop (laughs) kind of in most countries because it just... You know, it's a serious song. And again, I think if somebody else was singing that song, then it might have gotten more attention. And the song is amazing. That's the thing. Like and and a lot of people probably haven't even heard of it. Exactly. If you have not heard Rihanna's American Oxygen, go listen to it Do right now. And go watch the video. And go look it up. Please. So we we didn't get anything else until 2016. Um, we were waiting on the album, waiting on the album. There were so many delays. Uh, at one point, she revealed the album cover at an event. And then there were more delays. We never got a date. And then all of a sudden, like, she had... We're getting these little videos from Samsung. We, we were yes. getting those. <laughs> the the anti-diary. Trying to find stuff and... It was fun. Go in different rooms. I was doing it on my phones at work. Me like, too. I was <laughs> Me too. doing them. Um, so, you got the... It's, and all the videos, which were done beautifully, are on YouTube right now. Um, but, again, we never got a date. And then, all of a sudden, it, it hits the net. Rihanna's album has leaked. And it was leaked on Tidal. So everybody's going to listen to it. So then it was like a Thursday. It was like a Wednesday or Thursday. Was it Wednesday night? It was. It might have been a Thursday. I don't know. But it leaked. So, you know, she, of course, sold some records. People had bought it, whatever. So she ends up debuting at number 62. I can't remember I can't remember the number because we make a joke about it right now. But she debuted really low because her first week was literally one day or less than a day. Um, and the media tried to run with it. They tried to say Rihanna was done, her album flopped, which is so weird because y'all all could see that it was one day. Um, and the next week, she sold 100 and something, 200 and something in a full week and debut number one. That album actually ended up being number one for two weeks. Which is funny because Lemonade was only number one for one week. Here you go. I'm just saying. Um, And so many people were still doubting the album. They were saying it doesn't have any hits. The only hit it has is work. Blah, 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 blah. But when we scroll through these uh, singles, let's talk about these hits. Of course, work was number one for nine weeks. um, And was pretty much considered the song of the summer. Then we got Needed Me and Kiss It Better, which was weird that they released them together. I don't know what that was about. Um, But again, Work was a reggae song. Needed Me, R&B, I guess. Uh, Beautiful. You know, Needed Me is not even one of those songs that you think would climb the charts. It just sounds like an underground R&B artist made a song like it didn't. It was top 10. It was number seven. And I think it was the longest running top 10 to not go number one or something like that. Because it was in the top 10 for a long time. Um, Kissed It Better, unfortunately, did not slay the charts like it should. I really wish th- I really wish she was able to get Prince and to, in the v- to be in the video. Because those riffs, the guitar riffs, mm. sound like Prince. Could you imagine we got Prince and been- Rihanna yeah, on stage? Cool. Ugh. We did not get it. Um, it was one thing about these videos. is These videos were really cheap. They were kind of cheap for like a top pop star video. Um, and I think it's one of two reasons. At this time, Rihanna was off of Def Jam. I think she still has a distribution deal with them, but she's off of Def Jam. 
on her own label and still being managed by Rock Nation. She, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So she was, you know, kind of an independent artist, but she's a major artist because of, you know, who she is. And I feel like she didn't put a lot of money into the videos because she wanted it to be a focus on the music. And you could easily make the very distracting videos. I mean, look at Lady Gaga and the songs not be about anything. <laughs> so, you know, I think she wanted to really be in like a focus on the music. Um, But we got Kiss It Better. She had a collaboration with Mike Will, Nothing Is Promised. And then we got Sledgehammer. Hmm. Sledgehammer is another underrated song. Yes. How do you not, how do you not recognize Sledgehammer? It was made for that Star Trek movie that had came out around that time. She did a little promo. The video was beautiful. Again, it was written by Sia. Yeah, and y'all yeah. slept on it. It should have won an Oscar. It should have won an Emmy. It should have won an MTV award. It should have won a BET award, an AMA. Pull a surprise. Right? Pull a surprise. <laughs> Purple Heart. Sledgehammer. If you have not heard Sledgehammer, please go listen to it. Um, and then Love on My Bra Love on the Brain was the last single. Never got a video. It got a performance like maybe six months before it was even a single. You know what? You know what was basically the anti air was a mess. It was a mess. I think that was on purpose though. Or no. <laughs> what happened? You know it leaked. So I don't. That threw everything off. It, the leak threw stuff off. I don't know if the videos were rushed. So actually, work had a different video that was shot because there was like pictures of a horse that had Louis Vuitton yeah, fur or something. Yeah. Like all of that was supposed to, had came out and it was like this is from the work video and then all of a sudden we got a club video which oh, is... I thought that was I thought the horse was for me and me. Mm mm. Okay. Yeah, it was for work. So we never. We never seen that video. We don't know where that footage is. It's the same place Alicia Keys and Beyonce's song is. Uh, we're never going to see that video. But we never got a video for Low on a Brain. And the pr the promo was all. She did get her video Vanguard Award, which was great. But then y'all gave Beyonce 15 minutes set. <laughs> it was just like... It was foolish. It, it Anti... Anti... When I look at the whole era now, it was a mess. The promo was a mess. The the releasing was a mess. Thankfully, the music. The music is what definitely saved it. But when you look at it, she should it should have been better than what it was. Um, it definitely should have been better what it was. Um, but she did do some collaborations. Were Lemon with um, Nerd in ERD, and we also got. The uh, wow, wow, wow with DJ Khaled again. DJ Khaled. Number another song that uh stopped at number three. We were so close, we were so close. I could have seen that going number one. That should have been number one. Um, but that was pretty much bring us to where we're at now. I've named all the records and stuff she's won, she has nine Grammys. Um, to in uh, two video of the year musical music video awards um but she has a whole bunch of awards even though there's some that she should have won that she didn't get it's a lot of that it's a lot of that going on um but that just brings us here like we're at we're really? at we're at the end when it comes to her music um she is of course have fenty beauty and fenty uh, fashion line and savage Fenty. We just want some Fenty music. Um, but you know, Rihanna has been doing a lot. She's the philanthropy side of her has been really shining, especially during the COVID nineteen. Yeah. So it's you know yeah, it's she she's busy, but I'm gonna need something in the next thirty days. What do you what do you think the sound is? gonna be for the new album i know it's gonna be reggae um there was a guy that i guess submitted a song or something and he said that he left the project or didn't like what was going on because the reggae was turning more pop and i'm just like okay you're working with rihanna she mixes up everything so uh i i think it's gonna be 
a part of me thinks she's gonna have a couple songs that are like hard reggae, like like reggae, like reggae, yeah, reggae. I'm gonna need, yeah. <laughs> and then I think she's I gonna. Saw last night. I'm gonna need some authentic. Right. You know. And then I think she's gonna have some stuff that's gonna be. I just I, I know it's gonna be upbeat. That's what I want. I want an upbeat album. You don't think it's ballads or anything? I mean, I think it'll be some ballad ish thing, ish. like a reggae ballad. You know, it's still got the funky beat, but it's just slower. Um, but no, I I need something upbeat. Anti was very slow, which is fine because it was a great album. But yeah. I I need something else now. Yeah, give me reggae version of loud or something you know what i'm saying like give us something she can do it oh she's gonna do I, I, do it. I i know we're not gonna be disappointed that's what i know that's what you know yeah yeah <laughs> has she disappointed you since she's no. never disappointed me um i've even loved the song some people hate right so yeah i'm super excited for rihanna shout out to rihanna everything she's doing she has definitely dominated every single industry she has stepped in and i'm so excited to see what is coming next for her and hopefully if you know rihanna please send her my podcast i want her to hear i want her to know we love her and i would love to meet her and work with her i would do an interview please (laughs) please give us something but y'all that's it i'm gonna sign out we're signing out hopefully rihanna drops the album this summer hopefully let's pray cross your fingers please